<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you all if you have a PlayStation Vita, PlayStation TV, or Vita TV of some kind, how you can downgrade the firmware on it. This is all thanks to the Flow, who has created Modoru as of a few months ago. I know in several videos before, I had said that you cannot downgrade your Vita, and thankfully he has proven me wrong, because it is nice that we can now downgrade our Vita. The main thing, the main reason why you might want to do this is going to be if you are on a exploitable firmware. For example, I am on firmware 3.70, and I have the Trinity exploit on here, However, I want something that is a little bit better than this, and I also want to have cold boot access thanks to Enzo. So my goal here is going to be to downgrade to firmware 3.60 from firmware 3.70. Now keep in mind, I do want to throw out some precautions to you all. First of all, even though this is a pretty safe process for the most part, this is still downgrading your system firmware and directly manipulating the firmware itself. So because of that, you do have a risk of bricking your system. The flow has said that it is pretty safe and the brick risk is really minimal, but just in case, I'm just letting you all know that in case you brick your system, it's really going to be all up to you on there. Each system also has a minimum firmware version, meaning that if you try and flash a firmware lower than your console's minimum firmware version, you will brick your system, and at this point in time, there is no way to recover it. So do not downgrade to a firmware lower than what your console specifically can handle, and only you are going to be able to tell how that is done, which I'll show you later on in the video. Another thing to note from the flow is that he has said Sony prevents you from playing games that have been downloaded from a higher firmware. Therefore, after downgrading, a higher firmware game is going to be hidden. So for example, once we downgrade our firmware, this bubble for Trinity is going to disappear. And that's fine because I'm going to be installing Henkaku, so that's going to be really the main basis of why I would recommend people would downgrade, just so you can use something such as H Encore or Henkaku with Enzo. Now we're not out of the woods just yet, a few extra things. If you have used IMC Unlock, if you have it installed, it would be recommended to uninstall it before trying this out. You're also going to need to disable all of your plugins, so you can either delete your tie folders or back them up, but you will need to disable your plugins before you downgrade. And finally, you have to do this, you have to transfer the files and run them off of a internal storage device or from a official PlayStation Vita memory card. So if you have a Vita 1000 model, you will need a official memory card. If you have a 2000 or a TV or a Vita TV, you have to run this from the internal storage or a Vita memory card, but do not do this with a SD2 Vita. We will be making that redundant because we are going to be disabling the plugins, but that's just a heads up to you all. So now with all those warnings out the way, let's go ahead, move over to our PC and get exactly what we need in order to continue with this. So I'll have a few links down below in the description. The first one is going to be for the Flow's GitHub page for Modoru. And here he has a ton of instructions which you can check out yourself. And I'd recommend downloading the Modoru VPK because, well, not even recommendation, that's exactly what we need. Now the flow does recommend the Darth Sterney archive. However, I'm going to have a couple links for 3.60 and 3.65 firmware versions from Softpedia. In order to get this, all you need to do is click on download click secure download and wait for this to pop up. Even though it might say this is a PlayStation TV firmware file, it works just fine on a PlayStation Vita as well too. Finally, you're also going to need a method of transferring files to and from your already exploited Vita. So you can either connect this using Vita Shell FTP or using USB connectivity. But for FTP, I'm going to be using WinSCP. So now that we're at the Vita, what we can do is go and launch whatever type of exploit we need. So again, since I'm on 3.70, I'm going to be running Trinity. Once that's been run, go over to your settings, and we're going to manipulate our Hinkaku settings. For this, go into Hinkaku settings, enable unsafe homebrew, and that should be about all that we need right now. So I'm going to exit out of this, go over to Vita Shell and open up Vita Shell. For this, we will need to disable our plugins. So this is just going to ensure if you have a SD2 Vita card, we are going to be disabling that for the time being. 
But for that, you need to go into UR0, go down to Tie, and either rename this folder if you care about it, or if you don't care about it, these are all your plugins and your configurations and such, you can just delete it, which I'm going to do because I really don't need. And you can also go down to UX0, go to Tie, and delete or rename that. And now those are gone. So at that point, whatever we're using, any of our plugins are going to be unloaded once we restart our system, which that's what I recommend you do at this point. Just go in and give your system a restart. Once your system restarts, launch whatever method of exploitation you're going to use. So again, mine's going to be Trinity. And this one thing to keep in mind as well, if for whatever reason you already have Enzo installed and you're wanting to downgrade further, I'd recommend going into the Enzo application and uninstalling it from there. So you can open up Enzo, uninstall the Enzo cold boot, and then you can continue on. But we don't want to do this with that modification in mind already installed. So now once that's done, we can go back over to settings and Hinkaku settings, enable unsafe homebrew yet again, go down to unlink memory card, press OK. We're all good to go on that. And now go over to Vita Shell once again. And we just have a very basic install set up, which is exactly what we need. So now make sure you connect it however you want to. You can press the start button and do either FTP or USB. I'm going to use FTP for this. And when you select whatever you want, press the select button there and then connect it to your computer however you want. So connect up your USB cable, or you can connect your computer to this using FTP, which I'm going to do back on the PC here. So for WinSCP, just make sure you select FTP, no connection, put in your IP name, which should be showing up on your Vita right now. And I'm going to pick Leet for my port number, anonymous login, and login. And on the left here, navigate over to where you have downloaded your files. Now locate your VPK and your update file. Your update file, it needs to be, it cannot be PSV update. You will need to rename this to PSP2 update.pup. That's exactly what it needs to be. So on the right, navigate over to UX0 and create a folder, which is where you're going to be transferring everything. So I'm going to put mine in VPK and transfer over your Modoru VPK as well as your PSP2 update file because we're going to need the both of those. Now again, my update file here is 3.60 and if you want to follow along with that, you can. But when we actually do our check and if you cannot handle 3.60, like let's say the lowest firmware your system can take is 3.65, you're going to have to delete the PSP2 update file and then just do this same step here, but with whatever firmware file you are choosing to install. Again, my recommended versions would be 3.60 or 3.65 because both of those firmwares allow you to use Enzo, which will give you cold boot access to your modifications. So once that's done, we can close out of here and move back over to the Vita. On the Vita, press circle to cancel and now go down to UX0, go down to wherever you've downloaded your files and select Modoru, press X on it, and X to install, and X again to use the extended permissions. And once that's installed, you can just press triangle, delete, and say yes to deleting. And now select your PSP2 update file by pressing triangle, go down to move, which will confirm you're copying, but it really is moving. Now go up by pressing the ellipse up here, Go all the way up to App, go into Modoru, and then here you want to press the triangle button and paste. And we're just putting it right there alongside the actual application. So now we can exit out of Vita Shell. Once we exit out of Vita Shell, we also need to get a clean boot up going as well. So just go ahead and restart your Vita one time. Once your system boots back up, make sure you exploit it. So again, just kind of going to go through a run here of everything you'll need to do. Make sure you have uninstalled the Enzo cold boot if you already have Enzo on here and you're downgrading. Make sure you've uninstalled IMC unlock if you're using that. Make sure you've reset your plugins. You shouldn't be using SD to Vita if you have done that. And from that point on, you should be good. So if you have a 
portable Vita, a PlayStation Vita itself, I recommend also charging it up and making sure it is plugged into a reliable power source. So with everything here popped on, just go and open up Modoru. Now here, again, it's going to tell us my current version is 3.70, my target firmware is 3.60 because that's what I put on, and the target firmware has to be at least the same number or higher than the factory firmware. So in this case, it is just fine. But the target firmware cannot be lower than the factory firmware. So if you're running into that issue, make sure you replace the PSP2 updat file with a file which is going to be at least the same number as the factory firmware. But since we can continue here, I'm going to press X and it's going to give us this warning right here, which will give us 20 seconds to read this. So I'd recommend giving this a once over while you wait for this to allow you to continue. Once you're ready to accept and continue on, press the X button. And at this point, put down your controller, put down your Vita, don't touch anything and let it do its own thing for the next few minutes. Now, once your Vita restarts, check this out. We should be on a lower firmware. So to verify that, you can just wait for this to all come up. So once your Vita successfully restarts, you can verify this as downgraded by, first of all, if you're on Trendy, your Trendy bubble should disappear, but you can go to your settings here, go down all the way to system, system information, and as you can see, we are now on firmware 3.60. So we have successfully performed a downgrade. Now, if you are wanting to continue on with a lower firmware, the next thing you can do is follow along with a tutorial. So for example, with 3.60, you can use a 3.60 tutorial with 3.65, 3.67, 3.68. You can follow along with one of those tutorials as well to get you up and running on that firmware version. Now, I do want to show you all this before I go. Just if you want to install Hinkaku on here, I'm going to do this by going over to my browser. And first, well, that's not what I want. I'm going to stop this if I can. Actually, okay, I guess it's just going to do it. But here, there we go. That might just happen. So I've done this already. But generally, that's not going to be indicative of a proper install because as you can see molecular shell does not show up so what you might have to do is go to your browser open this up and then when it comes to this screen a second time hold down the right trigger right here so hold down the right trigger when you get in and it's going to force a reinstallation of molecular shell you might have to do that on 3.65 3.67 3.68 as well but that might be necessary to force that reinstallation. So that way, check it out, you now have Molecular Shell showing up and you should be good to go. From here on out, you can use this about the same as a 3.60 system. You can set up your plugins again. You can install Enzo so you have Cold Boot and you are good to go. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too. But let me know what firmware version you are downgrading to and what you are planning to do for that downgrade, why specifically you are downgrading. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off real this time. Later, everyone.